Life in Boston could be challenging, and the taxes levied by the British could make it even harder. One of the most famous actions in American history is a protest against those taxes. We have the chance to go inside the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum to explore that story and have a little hands-on history of our own with a tea party of our own. I'm Chris. Hello, I'm Evan O'Brien, creative manager of the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. Welcome. Thanks so much for having us. Tell me about your museum. Sure. Well, we're an immersive, interactive experience where we bring the story of the Boston Tea Party to life using a combination of high-tech interactive exhibits, first-person historical interpretation, and, of course, colonial-era artifacts to bring the destruction of the tea to a 21st century audience. Sounds like a lot of hands-on history for us today. Absolutely. Tell us about your friend here. Sure, well this is Samuel Adams, father of the American Revolution and master planner of the event that would become known as the Boston Tea Party. So can we go get our hands on some tea? Absolutely, let's go down to Griffin's Wharf aboard the Brig Beaver where our historical interpreter is waiting for you. Excellent. All right, go have fun. Good day, sir. Now, what is your name, sir? I'm Chris. Oh, wonderful to meet you, my friend. Now, I'm assuming you're a patriot, because you've already made your way aboard this vessel. Absolutely. Excellent. And you do know what would happen simply by stepping aboard the vessel on this night? No. Oh, well, my friend, it's an act of treason. Do you know what the punishment for treason is? Ooh, that sounds like it's a bad thing. Yes, it is. It's death by hanging. But have no fear. We will make sure we'll keep our actions here a secret. But seeing as you probably have made your way into Boston for the first time, oh, let you take a look around the ship. So we are here aboard the Brig Beaver. She is the last of the three vessels to arrive. If you follow me this way, I can take you a little bit up to the quarter deck. Now, typically only the captain and first mate are allowed on the quarter deck, but we're already committing treason. Let's break a few more rules. So my friends, welcome to the quarter deck. Now here in front of us is a tiller. You'll have that aboard this vessel instead of a ship's wheel. And that is because the Beaver is simply, well, a brig. She's a two-masted vessel. She also has a spanker boon, and this is to help her with her maneuverability rather than her speed. So our owners of the vessel decide to keep that tiller in order to make sure she's able to maneuver around any of these uh, shores or anywhere else that she's making her way through, especially where she's based out of, which is Nantucket. I'm sure you've heard of Nantucket, oh, yes. my friend. Excellent, excellent. But I must let you know, there are other dangers that are here on this night that we must be aware of. Now, out 500 yards away are Her Majesty's warships, the active, the captain, and the Kingfisher. And between them, they're carrying over 100 cannons, should they choose to do so. Well, they would fire upon this vessel and sink us, but have no fear. That is only if we were to steal these ships with the tea on board, try to send them back to London without a pass. And sir, do you plan on stealing this vessel? Oh, no, no. Oh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> so we'll stay here in the safety of Griffin's Wharf then. <laughs> But there is the army as well. And thankfully, while well, they're removed from our town, I assume you've heard of the Boston Massacre. Yes. It's a very tragic event that's very fresh in the mind of all Bostonians, including our governor, Thomas Hutchinson. And because of that, he has denied them their request to march back into town to break up our protests. So again, still very much safe on this night. Not far from the site of the Boston Tea Party is one of the city's most historic buildings. Constructed in 1713, the old state house served as the seat of the colonial government of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Royal imagery, including a lion and unicorn, adorns the building. And from the balcony, the royal governor addressed the colonists in the public square below. It was here, on the evening of March 5, 1770, where an angry mob of colonists gathered. The king's soldiers were taunted and pelted with rocks and snowballs. Suddenly a shot rang out, then a ragged volley. And when the smoke cleared, five colonists lay dead. The opening shots of the revolution, forever known as the Boston Massacre. Today, visitors can explore the historic structure and tour the old state house. Displays take you back to revolution era Boston while tracing the evolution of the building. It's a must stop on any field trip to Boston. 
Now, back to our normal programming. The only thing we have to fear, though, is our fellow townsmen and us as well. You see, many of them are lining the wharf, watching us, about 1,000 to 2,000, even loyalists among them, waiting to see us be hanged for our acts of treason. So I must ask that you keep this a secret on this night. I think it is best that we enter to an oath of secrecy. Do you agree, sir? Absolutely. Excellent. So I'll ask you to raise your right hand. And do you repeat after me? <clears throat> I swear. I swear. I was not there. I was not there. That's good enough, I believe you, sir. Now with that, we shall make our way to the bow of the front of the vessel. Follow me this way. Excellent. Now do be careful as you make your way down below. And I must say, these stairs would actually not exist during my time. They're simply here so we can easily make our way above and below. So you're very welcome, sir. <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome down below decks. We are now in the cargo hold of the vessel. Now, of course, this is a little bit taller than normal as it's meant for cargo, not for us to walk through. But also this flooring would not actually exist. It would be concave, go all the way down to the keel of the spine of the vessel. And this would be chock full of cargo. And of course, the type of cargo that is on board the vessel depends on where you're coming from or where you are heading to. If you are leaving from Boston, of course, you'll have your raw materials on board. If you're coming back from London, you will have your finished goods on board. And of course, the travel is quite long. You see, it takes about four to six weeks to make your way from Boston to London and six to eight weeks for that return journey as you are going against the trade winds. But unfortunately, the crew members have quite a bit they must contend with. Now, if you remember, I mentioned the folklore forecastle here. Well, this is it. Now, it's not quite everything you hoped it would be, but it's enough space. Well, I could say enough space, as much as you possibly can aboard a vessel, for all of these men. Now, not all of them will be down below decks for that sleeping shift. About half of the crew will be down below, the rest above decks working as well. There's always work to always be done. Now, again, this is the ladder that I spoke of to make their way above and below decks. And unfortunately, because they're at the front of the vessel, this is the rockiest and wettest part of the ship. And they must contend with that for weeks at a time on top of, well, squalid conditions and being next to your neighbors who haven't bathed in quite some time, of course. <laughs> now, we're making our way further through. Now, of course, you can see their variety of types of cargo. And do remember, we are here for the tea in particular. Now, this tea chest is actually one of our largest tea chests, or the full chest of tea, which could weigh about 400 pounds. Now, the essence of the weight is made up of the crate itself. The crate is about maybe 10% of the weight. Most of it is coming from the densely packed loose leaf tea here that is in these crates. In order to purposely destroy it, well, you're going to rip open the canvas, hack open the crate, rip through that lead foil lining, and then dig and scrape through the loose leaf tea. Now, some of the men will actually use their hats, they'll use their shoes, anything they can find in order to dump that tea overboard. It will actually take about three to three and a half hours time to get rid of all the tea aboard all three vessels. But thankfully, there's about 100 to 150 men that will come from Old South Meeting House to make their way here in order to destroy this tea. Now imagine you have about 12 crew members aboard your vessel and about 35 to 50 patriots storm your ship demanding this tea. You're definitely going to stay out of the way and they will do that, of course. Now on either side, we have our first mate and our captain sleeping berth. Captain would be on this side, first mate on the other side. You can notice uh, from the differences in what you see in there, of course. Still a small space, but do remember it is their own, and well, they have their own chamber pots as well. <laughs> but we'll make our way into the aft cabin at the back of the vessel, also known as our captain's cabin. Of course, you can see here is our Captain Hezekiah Coffin, very hard at work. He won't be bothered by us, of course. But our captain is very well known for being part of the whale trade, especially the Roach family that owns this vessel. Now, that does not mean he's part of the whale hunt or the Brick Beaver is part of the whale hunt. She's far too small to take on a task. But he's very well known for sending fresh shipments of whale oil from Nantucket or even Boston making its way to London. In fact, actually, well, our captain had just dropped off a fresh shipment of whale oil before taking on these detested teas, and he certainly did not know what would lie ahead of him, but we shall leave him alone for the time being, make our way back above decks. Follow me this way. Excellent, so let's make our way above, my friend. Now, Phyllis, you know a lot about this ship, but I understand you also know a lot about poetry. Oh, yes, I do, sir. Yes, you see, actually, my 
involvement with this more so has to do with that poetry writing that you speak of. You see, when I was 18 years of age, Susanna Wheatley will actually encourage me to put the books of poetry together. Unfortunately, we're not able to find a publisher here in town. So instead, they will look across the pond to London in order to find anyone who'd be willing to publish me. And thankfully, we're able to find someone. Now, just a few months ago, I actually returned from my trip from London, finding out that, yes, not only have my books been successfully published, but they're making their way into Boston. But unfortunately, I will find out that my books are actually on the Dartmouth, the first of the three vessels to arrive with that detested tea. Now, if you can imagine, I'm fearing that my life's work will be harmed, dumped into the harbor with the rest of the tea. Thankfully, though, I'm able to reach out to the captain, Captain Hall, and he's able to make sure the books are offloaded before this night occurs. I'm very thankful to him, of course. In due time, I'll be able to sell my books here in Boston and be well known as the well poet you know me today. Congratulations. And, thank you. Thank yeah. you, sir. Now, of course, speaking of this tested tea, my friend. I'm sure you're wondering, well, why are we risking our lives for this treasonous act? This is not the first time we protest anything that's happened in Parliament. There was a stab back the Townsend Act. But see, we do understand the importance of taxes here in our colonies. But unfortunately, the taxes are not benefiting us here as the colonists. Instead, it's going back to Parliament, even the East India Company, who are the ones who are sending us this detested tea. And they're very much profiting off of this. And there's also many people in our town who are loyalists very much, well, wanting to be part of the crown and not helping us here in the colonies, especially our royal governor, Thomas Hutchinson. And because of that, well, we feel like we've been betrayed by our own government. And we want to make sure that we're properly represented here. But if there's no one from our colonies making their way over to Parliament to properly represent us, and if any taxes are going to be enforced upon us, well, it has to be something that we agree with as the people here paying for it, but also knowing that it's coming back to our colonies and helping us. Now, another excuse they will make is that well, they're trying to raise money from the French and Indian War. Now, we know that is long past, of course, but I would say we've already paid back our due. Many of our own men fought in that war alongside the King's army. Many of our men died, of course, but apparently that is not enough. And they will do whatever they can in order to get money from us, even through these taxes. So this is our last final chance to make our voices heard. We must let them know that we will no longer stand for this. And if it does not come to us, well, tearing down the governor's home during the Stamp Act riots or anything like that, then we'll simply do this. We'll hit them in the pockets instead. They will lose many and we'll just take the consequences as they may. But I know everyone here, any son and daughter of Liberty will very much agree with these actions. And we will know that we did the right thing here as our patriots. So my friend, will you join me along in this treasonous act? Yes. Excellent, excellent. So you can take a chest of tea there and I think I'll take this one here. Now, before we do continue on, yes, you did take your oath of secrecy, but I must ask you these questions three to make sure you are committed to this action. Now, if you are here to destroy the tea, say aye. Aye. If you're here to cast off the yoke of parliamentary tyranny, say aye. Aye. If you're here to be caught and arrested for treason, say aye. Aye. Oh, goodness, no, no, sir. You oh, must keep oh, your wits oh, about oh, you oh, at oh, all oh, times, oh, my oh, friend. We are not oh, getting arrested on this night. No. We shall keep it a secret. Now, I think we are ready to commit treason on this night together. So, we'll take these tea chests. I will count to three. We'll toss these in these salty waters and make a salty brew for the fishes. Are we ready? One, two, three. Huzzah! Huzzah! Excellent, well Wait, done. Oh, here's oh, some more. Yes. I'm really... Huzzah! Huzzah! Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> Sinking irretrievably to the waters below. My goodness. Now, our apprentices will actually have to go out into these waters, further stamp down the tea, or push it further back to the harbor to get rid of all of that evidence. But I'm sure if you would like to have a try of these five teas, you don't want to have this salty brew. So you are welcome to make your way up to Abigail's tea room and have it done properly for you, of course, my friend. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much for committing treason with me, sir. And thanks for committing treason with me. Cheers. Cheers.